Welcome to my 1 to 60 Alliance leveling guide. For this part of the guide, we're going to be going over how to run the deadlines effectively. This is from the point of view of a tank, but anyone can benefit from the information in this guide to make your deadlines run go smoothly and take only about one hour. Keep in mind, this guide recommends that you are at least level 18, minimum level 17, and maximum level probably around 22 to 23. So the first thing is finding your group. You'll want to have someone capable of tanking, a healer, and then three damage dealers. At this level, mitigation and spec don't play much into your party strength. So a paladin, priest, or druid can effectively heal, and a druid, warrior, or paladin can pull off tanking. The main thing you want for deadmines, ideally, is just a long range CC. At this level, the only real form of long range CC is sheep. So mages are very desirable for deadmines but you'll be able to clear it just fine without one, it'll just be a bit harder. You'll also want to make sure to grab all five Deadmines quests. Three of the quests come from the Dwarven District in Stormwind. Shoni gives Underground Assault, and in the Dwarven Inn, there is a dwarf called Thessalnettle who gives the quests O oh Brother and Collecting Memories. The last two quests require you to complete the quest chain, The Defias Brotherhood, that starts at Sentinel Hill Tower. It has you run around quite a bit to Lakeshire and Stormwind, and then you've got to kill the Defias Messenger, and then finally escort the Defias Trader. Once you finish it, it'll give you the quest to kill Van Cleef, and also unlock the quest Red Silk Bandanas from atop the Sentinel Hill Tower. This quest is arguably the most important for running deadmines, so make sure you have it before you go inside or you'll miss out on some very nice blue rewards. Once you've got all those, group up with your party at the entrance to deadmines and prepare to head inside. Some last minute prep you may want to do is to make sure your bags are clear, you're repaired, and you set up some hotkeys. The first step is getting into the dungeon entrance, but we have two quests, O oh Brother and Collecting Memories, that are both completed outside the dungeon. So on your way into these mines, there are Defias diggers spread all over the place and some Defias elites. As the group tank, you should prioritize getting aggro on the elite mobs and keeping the non-elites off your healers. Don't bother trying to keep aggro on every single Defias digger. There are just gonna be too many of them and they don't really hit hard. So let your DPS handle them. At best, to just make sure to keep demoralizing shout on them to lower the incoming damage to your damage dealers. Inside, the very first large room you come across, you want to take the tunnel on your right or to the west. This tunnel will curve around until it goes upwards into another large room. In this large room, there's a path to the right that's going to lead you to the dungeon. There's a drop down with a bunch of annoying elites, and then there's a path to the left over a wooden bridge. To complete the quests, O oh Brother and Collecting Memories, we want to go left and cross the bridge. But try to avoid aggroing the Caster Defias near the ramp. If you do aggro him, deal with him quickly as he'll chain spawn fire elementals. Beyond the bridge, just continue south until you start seeing skeletons and ghouls in a ghostly looking part of the cave. The skeletons and ghouls are all elite and can be pulled in groups of 1 to 3, but shouldn't pose much threat as a party of 5. These guys will drop the miners union cards for the quest collecting memories. Don't be shy about killing a bunch, as though the drop rate of these union cards is high, it's likely all of your group members will need 4, so 20 in total. If they aren't up while you get here, it's probably because another group just recently came through. It's worth just waiting out their respawn times because these quests give a lot of experience and some nice rewards. Once they are up, make sure you clear all the way down to the end of this path to find the named ghoul named Foreman Thistlenettle. Kill him for Thessalnettle's badge to complete the quest, O oh Brother, and with both of those done, you'll be ready to clear back and make your way to the entrance of Deadmines. Get yourself back over that wooden bridge we just crossed, and this time, take the southwestern path out of this large cave, and be wary again of the wizard at the ramp. Don't let him spawn fire elementals willy-nilly. Now as a group here, you have the option of risking to make a run for the entrance, which is usually a good idea in a big time saver, as long as you as the tank leads the charge and don't die. Clear as far into the western cave as you like until you see the next wooden bridge with wooden guardrails. 
If you jump over the northern guardrails and down into the pit, you'll see the entrance of the dead mines further to the west. You can clear to it if you'd like to, or just make a break for it. Just make sure everyone is on the same page. If you start running, make sure your whole party starts running too. Welcome to the Dead Mines dungeon. Much of this dungeon follows the same theme as outside, with instead of diggers, we've got miners, a bunch of non-elite guys lining the cave walls. So your priority threat is the same. Focus on getting aggro on elites and any miners that attack your healer. In the first room, there are three Defias evokers that patrol around. Time your pulls so that you can kill them one at a time. You can use line of sight to pull them back to the entrance. The evokers have two abilities. They will always open up with the flame spell fire shield. This is not worth interrupting, so always let these guys cast that, and then try to interrupt their subsequent spells, which will be flame strike. If you cannot interrupt flame strike, you should take note of how they cast it. They will cast flame strike at the base of their highest threat target's feet, at the location they were standing when the cast started. This means that once they start casting, if you cannot interrupt it, just move and the flame strike won't hit you. The fire effect lingers on the ground, so try to pull the evoker out of the flames to stop your allies from taking damage. This will make life for your healer much easier. Once the three evokers in this tunnel die, take the southwest tunnel and continue on. You'll start seeing Defias overseers mixed in with the miners, so try to pull them with as little minor ads as possible, and while it's unlikely you'll be able to keep threat on all the miners, at least keep demo shut up to minimize the incoming damage for those who do have threat. And be aware of their fleeing mechanic. If you do have threat on a target, try to position yourself between the target and its allies so that it doesn't flee towards more enemies, it flees back to the direction you guys came from. Further south, you'll find yourself running into the first boss, Rakzor. This guy is about as difficult as his loot table suggests. He can be pulled without the adds, but if you're impatient, just go at him. Have your DPS focus on the adds or CC them once they're dead and dealt with. Kill Raxor. You can disarm him and demo shout to reduce his damage, but they don't do anything worth noting. The only thing you need to worry about is to make sure you keep threat on all three targets here. CC if you want to. Once he dies, the door will open, and another dead mines mechanic will start to kick in. Anytime you kill a boss in the dead mines, a group of elite Defias will spawn behind you. This usually doesn't matter unless the groups wipe or you linger in the same place too long. So just keep moving forward. In the next tunnel, you'll start seeing more evokers, some overseers, keep dealing with their flame strike mechanic, and keep the elites on you. Try not to pull more than you need to here, like I did. There are several roamers, and as you may have noticed, nearly everything in this dungeon, yeah, is trying to flee. If you're specced fury as my guide suggests, you won't have tactical mastery yet, so stance dancing to hamstring them isn't really viable. The only real alternative to deal with fleeing mobs is to pull them far back and position yourself between the mobs. But don't stress it too much, most of the extra mobs are just going to be the non-elite miners, and as long as your group isn't too low level, it shouldn't be too much trouble to deal with. Now in this corridor here, the tunnel branches north and south. Sometimes a rare spawn pops up in the north tunnel, Miner Johnson, so it's worth clearing the miners to see if he's up or you can just backslash target Miner Johnson and if nothing comes up then don't even bother with it. If he's up, clear to him and get an extra free item, then continue down south pulling manageable amounts of miners until you get to the next heavy door. This heavy door will lead to the goblin woodcarvers. Whenever you pull these guys, they'll knock you down, they hit pretty hard, and they cleave. Your only priority here as a tank is to try to pull them one or two at a time, keep aggro, and face them away from the group while tanking them away from ranged to minimize the damage they deal with cleave. The boss in this room patrols up and down the wooden path, so wait for him to get close and pull him alone or with minimal adds. This boss, like the previous, doesn't do much of note, just hits hard, so pull him back to the entrance, demo shout, sunder, and use a bit of shield block to reduce incoming damage. If you do accidentally get an add, focus down the add first or CC it. When the shredder dies, Sneed will pop out, and he likes to disarm, so get aggro quick, and in turn you can disarm him right back. 
once he dies, he's got a chance of dropping a blue axe. This axe kind of sucks for warriors. It's blue and it's a two-hander, but it's faster than the Staff of Westfall. So there's pretty much no chance we'll ever use this axe in this guide. So if somebody else wants it, let him take it. There's usually a chest in the southwest corner of this room as well if you're willing to clear to it. Otherwise, finish clearing through the goblin woodcarvers until you reach the other end of the room. In the next hall, we'll start seeing Defias wizards, Defias taskmasters, and more goblin carvers. All of which can be pulled without any other elites. In total, there are only about 5 elites in this tunnel, so you should make your way through it quickly and arrive at the next heavy door into the foundry. The foundry is the hardest, deadliest section of dead mines. So it's important you understand what these goblins are doing. Every goblin inside the foundry will, the moment they are engaged in combat, begin summoning a remote controlled golem. This cannot be interrupted by shield dash or kick. The only way to stop them from summoning the golems is by hard CCing them. This means polymorph, hammer of justice, bear form bash, fear, nothing of which you as the tank can really do much about. For solo pulls with no allies nearby, you can do a trick of shooting a target then before the shot puts you in combat using charge. The shot will make the goblin start trying to summon it and then the charge stun will interrupt the summon. But if you only stun them before they are in combat, they will summon after the CC wears off. It's important you get them in combat before you try to CC them. If you have a mage, the ideal way to manage this is to have the mage auto attack with a wand and then start casting polymorph. Without a mage, it's tricky to get close enough to use the other forms of CC available to you at this level without aggroing too many more goblins. If this is the case, you'll find yourself just having to kill these extra mobs every pull. As the tank, try to aggro all of them, demo shout, and I'd even recommend stance dancing to battle stance once you have threat and the hamstring the targets to kite them if you don't have burning slow debuff on you at the time. If you're here at level 20, you can kite them even easier using piercing howl. This room is all about taking it slow and steady, clearing out the goblins in pulls of 1 or 2, and it is possible to skip some of the pulls, but from my experience, someone always just aggroes them anyway, so it's best to just safely clear the whole place. The goal, of course, is to get to the named goblin on the north side of the room, as well as the chest that is hiding under the ramp. Now, as you get towards Gilnet, you'll look like the goblin has a three-man pull with him. If you're patient, though, you can get the westmost goblin patrol away and aggro it solo, then you'll be left with just the boss and an extra add. Now when you do deal with the boss pull, you really want to stop the extra ad from summoning the golem. But this time, it's in your hands as a warrior. You can start the pull by shooting your crossbow at the extra goblin ad, and once the crossbow shot is loosed, use charge to stun him and it should stop the summon. Otherwise, you can have literally anyone else in your group run in with you and use their hard CC. It'd be Hammer of Justice, Bear Form Bash, Fear. There's no risk of adds at this point because you've already cleared the place, so anybody can just run in and use whatever hard CC they have to stop that golem from spawning. Then kill the goblin ad and take out Gilnid and the door should open to the final leg of Deadmine. Gilnid drops a nice ring, which we technically could use as a warrior, but it's best in the hands of another class, so don't be a greedy little loot whore, just give it to someone else. Otherwise, everybody on the server is already going to hate you. Even though the server just launched, it's a bad way to start off your reputation. So continue north through the next tunnel, but be aware that a patrol of three Defias will spawn at the top of the foundry when Gilna dies. So make sure your group doesn't accidentally aggro them and push forward quickly to avoid them. They only patrol to the bottom of the ramp in the foundry, but if anybody moves too far back, yeah, you'll have a bunch of elites chasing your butts down. In this next tunnel, with some two-man pulls of wizards and taskmasters, just keep interrupting the wizards, keep the elites on you, try not to get swarmed by miners. And yeah, in total there's only a few elites in this tunnel, so it should go pretty quick. In the northern nook of this tunnel, you will find a barrel with blasting powder. Make sure somebody loots this, and then uses it in the cannon at the end of the tunnel to blow open the door. Once you use the cannon, you should be ready for two defiant pirates to charge the group with parrot pulls. The pirates don't really do anything special and the parrots are non-elite, but be wary of an elite patrol that will spawn at the back of this tunnel once the cannon is fired, and quickly move into the cove ahead. North of this wooden walkway here, immediately upon you entering, there should be some goblin shipbuilders which might aggro if people get too close to them, so try to avoid 
and stay south. Just be cautious of their existence. If your allies aggro them, just pick up threat and make sure they don't kill your healer. Along this pathway, you should be able to pull these elites by themselves. The Squall Shapers, Frost Nova, and Fire Blast, and the Pirates come with birds, but honestly, there's nothing threatening here. Just clear your way to the end of the wooden platform, and you'll reach the next boss. When you move on to the little piece of land here at the base of the ship, Mr. Smite will rush down the bridge, and two stealth black guards will reveal themselves. Now it's very important you kill the black guards first, as Smite will do a 7 second stun once he gets to 66% HP. And if the black guards are still alive while you're stunned, you're gonna die. So have your group focus fire down the black guards one at a time and keep them aggroed on you as much as you can. They hit pretty hard, so if you have no CC available, be prepared to use potions, kiting, demo show, and thunderclap whenever you can to just keep the damage reduced. Once they die, the hard part of the fight is over. Smite will group stun at 66 and 33% to switch weapons, but his damage doesn't change all that much, so once he dies, pray to the gods he drops Smite's hammer. As this is the badass weapon for warriors and one of the main reasons we want to run deadmines. If it doesn't drop, don't panic. The quest reward for killing Van Cleef is a viable substitute. This leveling guide is about getting to 60 fast, so we don't want to linger in dungeons to farm an item, but if you really want that hammer badly, feel free to run dead mines until it drops. The next step is to start clearing up the boat. Now at the top of the ramp, you'll have many pirates and shipbuilder pulls and some patrols. Going right is going to lead you to Van Cleef. Going left leads to an optional boss named Cookie. Now, I've found that there's a common misconception that it's easy to kill Cookie, the optional boss, by just jumping down after you kill the last boss. But every single time I've done this, the group wipes and everyone leaves so Cookie doesn't die. So rather than risk the jump down group wipe, I recommend you just clear a little bit to the left path and wait for Cookie to patrol to the group. He gets really close to the ramp, so you shouldn't need to clear much if you are patient. Now Cookie drops a really good wand for casters that they all want. So show your casters some love and just kill Cookie this way. Don't do what I do in this run and suicide jump for him and we all die at the end. Cookie himself is a face tank murloc side boss, so just wait it out, do a couple extra pulls, kill him. Your priests, your mages, your warlocks, they're all gonna love you for it. Now once you've gotten Cookie taken care of, clear east cautiously, and I mean super cautiously. The last big threat of this dungeon run is going to be getting swarmed and there's a lot of buggy pulls that like to aggro through walls and ramps here. So pull everything back, be wary of the fleeing mechanic, and if you are playing with anybody who's below 17, have them stand way back to avoid the big ol' aggro radius that their low levels bring with them. Cautiously clear up the ramp taking pulls of 1 or 2. None of these mobs are threatening as long as you pull in small groups. The big challenge is when you get to the top of the first ramp on the second level platform. There is a boss, Captain Greenskin, that patrols on the deck of the ship with two pirates. One of the pirates has a pet bird that likes to aggro through the side of the ship. So if you get too close to the upper level of the platform, the parrot will aggro you and then pull everything on the ship with him. It's pretty buggy, but you can easily avoid it if you just keep track of where this patrol on the deck is anytime you move up to aggro more of the mobs. So it's a good idea to mark him with a symbol, keep track of his position, have your group stay down the ramp on the lower platform, and then have the tank just run up anytime Captain Greenskin's far away and cautiously pull the pirates from the top ramp down to your party members as they keep a distance. It's an easy, stupid way to wipe, to have the boss just bug out and pull half the ship onto you, so play it safe. Wiping in dead mines has the bad effect of forcing you to clear through all those respawned patrols, and it really slows down your clear speed. Once you've carefully pulled up the top of the ship, you'll get access to Captain Greenskin and his companion pirates. Use CC on the pull, demo shout, and kill these guys by focusing on the non-boss mobs first. You can use Disarm on Greenskin to minimize damage, and aside from his cleave mechanic that warrants facing him away from your party members, there's nothing really much to worry about this guy. When the Captain Greenskin is dead, all that's left is Van Cleef hiding inside the room atop the ship. Van Cleef hits hard, and he starts the fight with two Defias Blackguards that are stealth. 
you'll want to demo shout, disarm on cooldown, and have a potion ready. Have your DPS CC and kill the black guards as soon as possible to minimize incoming damage. Any form of CC is ideal, but try to kill both of them on account of at 50% Van Cleef will spawn two more. Once they spawn, the same thing, grab aggro on both, have them CC'd and killed as fast as possible. The major cause of wipes here will be the tank death, so anything you can do to minimize incoming damage, you should do it. As a tank, if a hunter pet or a warlock pet takes aggro from you on the blackguards, let them. Don't fight it for aggro. The pet dying is okay, but if you die, it's bad news. So once you kill Van Cleef, don't forget to loot his head and loot the unsent letter. I repeat, do not forget to loot both of these items. Check and double check that you got them. And with that, you'll be done with dead mines. Uh, you can jump down off the east side of the boat and try to kill Cookie if you didn't already. You're most likely going to fail, aggro a bunch of guys, die, and then nobody's going to want to go back and kill Cookie. But you can then spirit res out of the dungeon back in Westfall, or you can continue up the mountain path there is another exit to dead mines if you continue up the trail across the bridge now to rejoin with my leveling guide make sure you head back to sentinel hill and turn in the head of van cleef and red silk bantanas at the top of sentinel hill tower if you didn't get smite's hammer to drop take the quest reward the staff of westfall from killing van cleef you may be thinking ew it's got in and spirit but Spirit's pretty awesome. This was the only run I actually didn't use the staff. This is the first time I got lucky with Smite's hammer. And honestly, the damage difference between the hammer and the staff isn't that big. And the staff gives a ton of HP out of combat regen from the Spirit. Even if you got the Taskmaster's axe, take the staff. It's slower, therefore the higher top end damage, and it synergizes better with our hamstring playstyle. If you did get Smite's hammer, obviously just take the Dagnam male pants. Then head up the tower and turn in the red silk bandanas for some weapons you can vendor. Now at this point, if you are following my leveling guide, if you haven't finished part 3 Westfall, jump back into that guide wherever you left off. If you have finished it, fly to Stormwind to turn in your other's Deadmines quest and jump back into whatever part of the guide you left off at. This Deadmines dungeon guide essentially rejoins the leveling guide at the start of part 4. So, until you're level 20 and done part 3, I am booping out.